Our title is today Working Together for Peace and Development. What can youth and civil society bring to the table to support United Nations Sustainable Development Goals? Welcome, Magister Mat Christine Mutonen, as a politician, as a teacher, and especially as a woman. And this is why I think um, initiatives like um, Meet and Greet are necessary and uh, important because uh, such initiatives offer a platform for dialogue and exchange, which at the same time is a platform of inspiration and learning. So once again, thank you to the organizers. My hometown, Villach, was the first city in Austria with such a council. It was um, established in 1997. And the elected representatives have the right to speak at the meetings of the municipal council and are consulted in youth-related um, issues. But also parliamentarian organizations realize the importance of young people. The Interparliamentary Union, this is the, the Interparliamentary Union represents parliaments from worldwide. Through the IPU, young parliamentarians have a platform to engage in global dialogue, in change insights with peers from around the world and other legislators. This helps building coalitions across generations and nations to tackle shared global challenges. And um, talking to people from other countries gives you new ideas, the young people, new ideas and understanding. Uh, now I give the, my name is Maria Riel and I represent Women's Federation for World Peace International. And I give now the... Um, and to ensure that no one is left behind. So uh, we have, we're excited to have many, many qualified and uh, interesting dynamic speakers. I highly commend the Women's Federation of World Peace uh, uh, for its impactful work uh, towards the UN Sustainable Goals. So uh, we were working with people who use drugs, women who use drugs, women who uh, live with HIV. So uh, we were working with civil society uh, organizations in this area, of course, especially to achieve goal three, which promotes health and well-being for all, and uh, goal 16, that encourage peaceful, peaceful society or justice for all. Our law enforcement officers, they didn't know before what do civil society actually uh, doing, they are, are, are doing there. UN should treat them as an equal partner, valuing their expertise and uh, their insights. So it means the sustainable approach starts with early involvement of civil society organizations in planning and decision making, leading uh, to strategies that resonate with them. Um... Uh, that's Mr. J.V. Marasigam Pangam. He's a multimedia journalist, uh, originally from the Philippines. So I lived in Hiroshima, Japan for uh, more than three years, and I'm here to share with you my work Okay, there's still some sound playing. But I also had the privilege of talking to comfort women in the Philippines, and I also talked to Japanese university students in Okayama University, for example, to talk about Philippine-Japanese war history. Um, two ladies, uh, we want to welcome Alinia Nyangasi, a lawyer and youth advocate, and Yvonne Alma Mutafuta, they, these ladies are from Kenya and recently became good friends with the Women's Federation for World Peace uh, uh, at the UN in Vienna. However, I come from Nairobi, Kenya, set free to thrive. We do believe that a man or a woman or a child who has knowledge is in a very good position to protect themselves. So yeah, you can see the slides. Uh, those are boys, the tribe juniors, boys and girls, because we are keeping both boys and girls to stay in school and also to stay uh, away from um, harmful activities out here. Just keeping girls in school and also we have the teenage mothers and with that, we are able to also teach them on human trafficking, gender-based violence and also uh, 
It's uh, really amazing what you've been doing uh, legally and socially and really mentoring these these youth to become uh, global citizens, actually. So our next speaker is already here next to me, Mr. Arjun Kumar Das. Express my um, organization activities and uh, a non-profit and a charitable organization, Maitri, of the marginal, marginalized, underprivileged, untouchable community people, irrespective of caste, religions, uh, in the remote areas of the southern part of Bangladesh, has been working with 150 untouchable, street, orphan, slum, girls, because uh, caste discrimination uh, is acute in Bangladesh, and uh, uh, that's why uh, that's why I am working and my uh, uh, my organization is working uh, for the development of the uh, Dalit uh, untouchable uh, children. And her name is Shirley Dimano and always has a dream of becoming an advocate for world peace. Um, she moved to Hungary and Austria and uh, recently she started to work as a German teacher. For an Austrian integration project. I just would like to introduce myself briefly. I am from the Philippines and I have been in uh, 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 working for the Austrian project called UEF, Österreichische Integrationsfonds. And there we teach young people, especially from Syria, from Afghanistan, from Somalia. They are actually refugees who came to Austria. Uh, to start a new life here, and they need the basic education to get started here. So we teach them English, German, mathematics, and and also the integration integration issues or questions about living in Austria. So we can play with them, we can sing with them, dance with them, and do some uh, how do you say uh, other activities like cooking and eating together, drinking together. I think it would be a lot of fun. So that's yes. Relates a bit to my work as well because I also work with refugee kids in Holland. That you could all be here with us. That's amazing about the technology nowadays uh, of the Women's Federation for World Peace, Mrs. Carolyn Henschen. And working with uh, mostly the governments and the UN bodies in Geneva, especially Human Rights Council, also CEDAW, you know, the Committee on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women on Beijing Plus 30. And we pr presented some of our recommendations actually. And I just felt like, okay, mm, to make platforms where we could meet together with the, you know, the decision makers and the local knowledge and the youth and the elder experienced. And, and it just brings, I heard mentioned already several times today, it's some family. If we, it, it, we need to somehow create an environment where we can trust. It is crucial of uh, as uh, peace-loving global citizens come together uh, to talk and share our experiences in a collaborative approach. There's no problem without a solution, right? And I do believe anything can be transformed, especially at these challenging times of history in which cultivating a culture of peace is necessary to build a better world for all. Some tips that you have through your experience of partners that are working in different areas like the United Nations or the Council of Europe, you OECD and civil society. What are some tips that we can more easily understand each other and you know make real partnerships that can actually make, make a difference? Huh? When you start trying to network, and networking is very important, and this that's why it's so important to do what we do here now, today, then you can start to have real dialogues. And I realized, um, especially with the few women that were at that time in the Parliamentary Assembly of the OEC, that even if they were from another party, even have another opinion. This is possible. This is normal. That's democracy, maybe. And um, and I think this is something important. We should work together. So 
we have different agencies working with uh, civil society organizations, um, strengths of uh, civil society organizations, because it's unique, really, capacity of civil society, it's really unique. UN talks a lot about interagency co cooperation, interagency collaboration, no one left behind, everything. It's you uh, have UN also has many platforms. Enough for the living, make a little space.